Hello everyone, uh, this is the third stream on the channel and uh, today we're going to uh, continue and hopefully finish up um, the Kilikia campaign and uh, if we have some extra time I'll uh, show off a couple of the other campaigns here but uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, hello, Premier Cherdenko. Hello, uh, Watch Captain Alen of the Death Watch. Uh, good to see everybody. How is everybody doing as this loads up? Okay, and uh, we're back. So uh, remember in the first day, in the first stream, I said that the goal of our particular campaign would be to, um, uh, hello, hello Roche, how are you? Uh, our goal was to uh, take back the main cities of the medieval kingdom, which was destroyed in uh, 1045. And uh, those provinces were Ani, Devinvan, and Nachichevan. And uh, in the first uh, stream, we were able to get all the way to Van here. But uh, in the second stream, we did take Ani, but we lost Trabizond, unfortunately. And uh, now we're in a bit of a difficult situation because uh, the, the Romans, the Byzantines, are constantly attacking us. And um, they're attacking us all over. The Zengids have just attacked us. Uh, I am well, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, we attacked the Georgians so that we could take Ani and Devin. But uh, unfortunately, the, with the Zengids attacking us, we're in a bit of a difficult situation. So we have some forces uh, near Sebastia, but they're not strong enough to take down this Zengid army here. We only have a few spearmen in uh, Malatia, and these are the basic uh, light spearmen. Um, but I guess what we're going to have to do again is uh, take Badvagan out of Seleucia and uh, send him against the Zengids. And uh, perhaps we might have to sack uh, Aleppo, uh, the capital of the Zangids, so that we can turn this uh, conflict around, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. So let's uh, take, take our army out of Seleucia here. We can't finish that siege right now. And uh, let's go finish up uh, well we have a couple of choices um, the enemy is besieging Malatia with three small armies and they have siege equipment already um, also the Georgians are besieging Ani um, so, we have to lift the siege. So let's do it. Uh, luckily, this army is led by the king. So, um, and luckily our king has extremely good command stat, as, as, you, as you just saw. So uh, this battle should be fairly easy even though the Georgians have sent good units and I have a pretty basic army here. So let's get our troops out and our missile troops as well and our cavalry. I'll put our cavalry on the right and uh, yeah, let's fast forward this as we leave the city. 
Again, okay, I've been bashing Medieval 2 a lot in some videos, so a good point here is that the pathfinding to get out of towns is um, much better in Medieval 2 than it is in Rome 1, except for this Caucasian mountaineer who keeps running into the wall. Yeah. Hopefully he figures out what to do soon. Okay, he figured it out. He figured out he's not a ghost. Okay. So the enemy dismounted Monaspa horse archers are firing on our troops. So let's, uh, let's get our mountaineers to charge. Our V-shops will charge uh, before. I'll get our V-shops to charge in uh, before the uh, my weaker Caucasian Mountaineer unit there. And I do have some spearmen, so I'll keep them as a reserve. Or I'll have them attack the right flank as well. And I'll move my uh, Naharar bodyguards up to flank them. And I'll keep the Naharar knights as... Uh, a reserve and it seems like uh, the enemy archers are doing some heavy damage because um, my Caucasian mountaineer axemen have rather poor defense so actually it seems like they're not uh, skirmishing so let's charge at them as well and you know what these axemen can charge that way, and you charge them as well. And you axemen charge over there. And I'll have my, um, uh, hello, Jewel, how are you? Uh, hello, Histo guy. I am well, how are you? Oh, yes, you're welcome for the, uh, advice on Pontus. I will, um, uh, I will do um, finish that video up soon. I have a video. I'll probably do a video on the coin on Helenon, the Greek cities, prior to that. But uh, I'll work on it. Okay, our charge there was very good at the flank of their Tadzreuli swordsman. So let's pull our king back here, and then we'll charge the other flank. So let's get our bodyguards um, to form up there. Actually, you know what? I'll keep the king over here uh, just to keep these uh, Tadzreuli swordsmen honest. And let's charge down the hill at these uh, two units here. Let's see the nice cavalry charge. And that wasn't so great because I think this tiny unit and the battering rams blocked me there. So I think they're about to rout there. So I'll have the king charge down this hill and I'll have uh, my other cavalry units uh, charge at their Tadzreuli swordsmen. And it's, it seems like our king's unit is doing very well indeed. So we'll actually have our um, other units here chase down uh, the enemy troops. And let's see when they decide to rout here. Again, those... Uh, those Tadzreulis are some of the best troops they have. But uh, they were no match for cavalry, or heavy cavalry. And let's finish running them down. Okay, and that's that. 
or there's this one last guy, and for some reason our cavalry don't want to chase him down. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. So uh, what does everyone think I should do? Uh, I'm gonna ransom these guys. Okay. They don't want the ransom, then that's what happens. Um, so what should I do here? The Georgian... Um, so last time, in the there was a battle here in the mountains. And this uh, small army, I was able to really do some heavy damage against the Georgian army that attacked me. I had about 500 troops and they had about 1,500. Um, but through some skirmishing and other tactics, I was able to um, repel them. Um, so the Georgian army is actually pretty depleted. So actually, this might be a good chance uh, to besiege the Veen. Um, unfortunately, we have a kind of snaky kingdom here in that it's very skinny, especially up the middle here. So uh, if the enemy takes Malatia, then we only have a small corridor for safe passage up to uh, Greater Armenia. So, um, yeah, I have to think about uh, what we have to do here. So Malatia, it doesn't seem like I'll be able to hold it but you know what? I have to try. So I have my uh, faction heir in Sebastia. And I have some spearmen and some archers. And it seems like Sebastia's public order is okay. So you know what? Um, with this army, I think I will try to uh, push back these Zengids here. So let's... Let's try it. Also, everybody, let me know what you think of the uh, best times to schedule these, uh, because um, I noticed that um, on Thursday, last Thursday, our second stream, and on... Uh, Saturday, the first stream, uh, we had a few more people watching than uh, today. So if if Sunday is not a good day for everybody, then, um, you know, I can try to focus more on doing these on Saturday or other days in any case. Um, so yeah, let me know about that because uh, my schedule is a little bit flexible. Um, so I've got my Caucasian Mountaineer archers here, and it seems like the enemy, the Zengids, we haven't fought a Zengid army yet, so it seems like they have some good medium cavalry, and they have Kurdish lancers as well. This unit looks very nice, actually. So they have some heavy cavalry and some uh, medium cavalry. And uh, my army is not exactly anti-cavalry here. But let's bring our troops in. Okay, our archers are doing well here. Let's bring our spearmen and infantry in front of them. And I'm going to have my Naharar bodyguard act as a reserve to support the left flank here. Okay, so they've gotten a bit too close. I'm going to charge at them with the... Um... Okay, the V-shops will throw javelins and charge. The Caucasian Mountaineers are fighting with their medium cavalry here. And I'll have my uh, General's Bodyguard hit the medium cavalry as well. 
I'll keep the Mountaineer Axemen in their position. And it seems like we're doing well so far, but um, yeah, we need more time. Okay, we routed those troops on the flank there. So let's... Um, okay, their levy spearmen are also routing, which is very good. V-Shop infantry charge those guys. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Uh, Caucasian Axemen charge at those guys as well. At the uh, missile troops. I don't want the uh, the devil archers uh, to fire at those guys in particular. That was an incorrect order. Okay, so we were able to do some heavy damage uh, to their lancers, which is very good. But we have to finish off their uh, missile units quickly here. So let's keep up the attack. Um, it seems like their forces are coming in quickly, unfortunately. So what we have to do is uh, reform our battle line on the hill, since we have a little advantage there. Get our Caucasian Mountaineer uh, archers into position and you know what those guys are resisting us pretty well so we've got to uh, pull our general's bodyguard back oh and they tried to attack our um, spearmen before they got into the thick of things here so let's try to um, flank them here and do our best to um, defeat their cavalry. Now our spearmen are actually holding off their uh, Kurdish knights pretty well. Have I... Uh, hello Jesse, how are you? Um, Vicky have, says, have you made peace with the Romans and Ottomans? Uh, there are no Ottomans here, but if you mean the uh, Seljuks of rum then um i believe that i believe i've made peace with them but not the romans uh the romans are still at war with me okay so they are charging i'll have our spearmen flank there Our archers are out of uh, ammo, so um, I'm going to move my archers in uh, to flank. So these uh, Kurdish lancers want to engage our archers, even though they're not done with our spearmen. So I don't know why that is. Okay, so um, the Debul archers move in to support our axemen there. And hopefully our V-Shop infantry moves in a little more quickly. And a general move against these uh, dismounted Askaris. Were our spearmen able to uh, defeat these guys? Not yet. And they are charging with some archers here. So you know what? Okay, let's move these guys uh, to fight the archers. And hopefully the rest of our spearmen can 
do some more heavy damage against their Lancers. Okay, our Caucasian Mountaineer Axemen have been successful up the middle. And our faction heir was also successful. And our Caucasian Mountaineer archers. Um, okay, it seems like they're out of ammunition. So let's move against these remaining enemy forces. It seems like the battle is not going too badly, but it's not going great either. Okay, guys, you have to do something here. Wait a minute, who's that? Okay, keep fighting the Askari cavalry, you guys. Okay, and it seems like... Um, Okay, we caused a rout here, very good. But now we have to move against the remainder of their forces. Our archers are doing pretty well, which is nice. But uh, we have to catch up to them. Uh, they are doing a lot of skirmishing. Uh, they routed one of our units there. Glorious heaven above. Our men have captured the enemy general. Guard but it seems like we're doing pretty well. As sure as the Chiaks defeat the rest of his army. Okay, guys, keep moving. Okay, we got him. Okay, now General, charge their Kurdish Lancers here. Oh, that's not good. We lost our faction heir. Yeah, those Kurdish Knights, uh, they're pretty powerful, as we found out. Um, I mean, our general's bodyguard can beat them, as we're seeing, but uh, our general was unfortunately uh, caught. And he was surrounded there. So watch captain says he'd prefer Thursday or Friday. Okay. Okay, so... Um, I, I will continue to do the Thursday stream because that was a very um, nice one, I think. Uh, hello, Valhalian. Hello, Zephyrik. Good to see everybody. Okay, so we we defeated those guys, which is good. Let's set up our battle line again. And it seems like this battle is pretty much over. Oh, the enemy does have some extra troops in the back here. But our V-shops are um, chasing down people, unfortunately. So I've got to bring them back into the fold. We've got to rebuild our battle line. Yeah, let's rebuild the battle line here. And let's uh, move forward against the remaining enemy troops. Because our V-Shop infantry is in trouble.
Yeah, one. Uh, yeah, the general he charged alone. I should have. What I should have done is um, had him uh, blow the horn, because that seems to make the general avoid doing charges like that. But yeah, that was my mistake there. Well, I don't know what our unit is doing here. Okay, get those guys. Okay, I think we got them. Okay, our V-Shop infantry was able to route those guys. Uh, the enemy general's uh, dead. Uh, hello, Danny. How are you? Yeah, the enemy general is uh, dead. So let's set up uh, the rest of my troops in a battle line. My archers don't have um, any ammo, so they're going to be part of the battle line here. Yeah, let's catch this guy. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have a spare air? Uh, it would be nice. So let's catch these guys. And then we'll move against these enemy archers here. Okay, so let's uh, have our units on the right charge against those archers here. And let's have the rest of our battle line move forward. And let's uh, move our cavalry unit back to support. But uh, yeah, it seems like 71% of the enemy has been killed, which is good. But they do have a unit of medium cavalry here that's left, which I am concerned about. Our army is tired. But let's see what we can do. Okay, their guys are routing. Very good. Okay, so let's, um, you know what, let's charge at these archers. And how are we going to catch them? We're going to um, have our general's unit charge at them, or just engage them, and uh, buy enough time for our uh, infantry to charge and destroy their unit. And I'll have the Mountaineer Axemen actually move in on the flank, and my Mountaineer... Pray the course of this battle changes, because defeat seems almost certain. I don't know why he's so certain about our defeat. Okay, so the enemy there has charged. So now let's charge with our units. Okay, so let's have our... Um, infantry here charge at their cavalry and let's have our other troops flank oh it seems like we are routing and it's it's because of their cavalry unit their cavalry unit is very good but uh, let's do our best
yeah, I think the loss of our uh, general unfortunately caused a serious issue in terms of uh, morale, as well as our army's uh, exhaustion. Yeah, it seems like this isn't going to go well here. So I should have taken the uh, Zengid army a little more seriously. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, we did destroy two of their armies, uh, which is good. That was a tough battle to lose, but um, let's accept the ransom. Oh, so we lost the city now, unfortunately. So who's our factionaire now? Um... Where's the king here? Okay, there he is. So the new faction heir should be... Zarzant. Okay. All right. So everything seems to be not so bad, actually. I am pulling this army out of Kilikia so that we can move against the Zengids themselves. And uh, with this army's support, I think we can sack... If we can sack Aleppo... Uh, hello, Bat Eater, how are you? Um, we, we just lost a battle near Malatia, even though we... Uh, took out most of the enemy troops. I lost my general and uh, morale of our army collapsed uh, But in any case Other than that we were able to defeat a Georgian army near Ani uh, We have We have a good amount of troops uh, in Armenia proper Right now so let's get the king and a couple of these um, generals together, together with some of my troops. And I want to attack Devin. Yeah, so perhaps next turn we can actually uh, assault Devin. We have some extra infantry as reinforcements. And, um, yeah, everything seems to be okay up here on the eastern front. Hmm, hmm. Okay, so Karin has a bit of a public order problem, so I do have to solve that. But right now, I need uh, more garrison troops. And I need more troops in general. So you know what? I'll construct, I'll uh, recruit a couple more spearmen in Sebastia. And um, I think that'll be it for this turn. We are retraining a bunch of troops in Adana and in Sis as well. So actually, you know what? These um, these cavalrymen, I should move to uh, Sebastia uh, to perhaps hook up with these troops and we'll kind of rebuild this middle army here, which just got wiped out in that battle. 
But uh, other than that, everything seems okay. Let's end the turn and see what our enemies decide to do. Okay, so they're taking Malatya. Which is unfortunate. But I think... Um, Actually, we're doing pretty well in this campaign, all things considered. We're moving towards our goals. And uh, I think we can pretty much finish this in this episode. Okay, so they've got this light infantry unit, which is pretty much the same as my um, light spearmen, but uh, they have javelins. Uh, hello, your mom. So how how do I address you? Are are you you or are you your mom? It's confusing. Anyway. Um, oh, you think I'm playing Command and Conquer Generals? Oh. Uh, if anyone wants to see me play Command and Conquer Generals, let me know. That one of my favorite games as a kid. Okay, so their infantry is actually pretty good. Even their archers here, they're pretty good. So, um, actually, I should not underestimate the Zengids here. I can't withdraw, so I have to fight them. I don't know if I can beat them, but I have to at least do as much damage as possible. You know, maybe I'll, um, m maybe at some point I'll create another channel uh, for other games or, or maybe I'll do it here. Why not? Uh, let's see. Let's see what I decide. I have to practice. I haven't played Command and Conquer Generals in a long time. Okay, so I have uh, Axemen, V-Shop Infantry, and some Spearmen. Let's see. Is there any favorable position here? Um, you know what? We, we have to move a little bit farther back. Because it seems like um, this hill here might be a decent position. So let's um, forget about skirmish mode. Put on guard mode for our archers. Uh, hello, historical gameplay. How are you? Um, I'm playing on... Um, what am I playing on? I think it was, um, I think it's very hard campaign and then normal battle difficulty. I think if anyone wants to uh, check that, let me know. I can't remember. So let's see the enemy. Yeah, they're coming forward. So I guess my plan is going to be the enemy wants to charge at my um, archers here, which is fine. So what I'll do is I will uh, flank them with my infantry. And that'll hopefully be especially devastating with my uh, Caucasian Mountaineer Axeman on the left flank. And uh, who knows, if I can do enough damage, uh, perhaps I can get them to retreat. Uh, hello, Jeezy. Good to see you. How are you? I've watched some of your reviews on different mods. They're phenomenal. Thank you for doing them. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh, it's nice comments like that that help make it worthwhile. Let's reform a little bit. Okay, come on, archers. Do some, do some damage here. Okay, let's have our Mountaineers move into a bit of a more favorable position. Are they throwing their javelins? They are. They only got a couple of my archers, which is good.
So let's see here. Are they going to charge? No, they want to throw more javelins. So you know what? Let's charge them from the left with the Caucasian Axemen. It seems like they are charging with their dismounted Ascaris. So you know what? Let's um let's have our V shops move in. I think our Caucasian Mountaineer archers should be able to handle this number of um, enemy infantry, but they are good. They're not bad infantry there. Um, Nawa says, have you thought about the video idea I proposed to you? Uh, the things I want to see in Total War Empire 2. Um, yeah, I've thought about it. Um, but I, I haven't been able to draft a video like that just yet. But I've thought about it. And it's a good idea, so I want to do one like that. Okay, let's see how much damage our V-Shops can do here. The enemy Turkmen infantry is not that bad. And we are outnumbered. So let's get these uh, Askaris to stop what they're doing. Our Axemen have done heavy damage to their Javelin uh, infantry there, which is good. So let's uh, actually charge at their archers with the Caucasian Mountaineer Axemen. Okay, we were able to finish off their Ascaris there, which is very good. So let's move our Mountaineer archers closer. Okay, so the enemy is um, moving away from our Axemen, leaving their Turkmen infantry exposed to a flank attack by um, our Caucasian Mountaineer Axemen. So let's charge at their Turkmen infantry, and if we can beat this unit, I think this battle will be won. Guys, what are you doing? Attack them, please. Okay. Um, Podcast Anon says, uh, which mod are you talking about? Um, you've been developing a balance mod called Dar al Harb, which is currently in beta. Uh, sure, I'll I'll take a look at that. Okay, so are the enemy Turkmen infantry routing? They are, which is very nice. Mountaineer archers uh, attack those guys. Oh, we did it! Uh, take out as many of them as you can. So yeah, the good. Um, our Didebul archers here are actually pretty good at melee as well. And that's, I think, what um, helped them a lot in this battle. Can you play Shrek Total War? I don't like Shrek. I, do, I don't like Shrek. It, he, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't like it. <laughs> um, uh, ho Historical Gameplay says, I hope the AI can consolidate its stacks more uh, efficiently on VH. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been that bad. Uh, not great, but, you know, pretty decent for Medieval 2, all things considered. Um, so it primarily nerfs cavalry and missiles. Oh, you've nerfed the missiles in Broken Crescent even more. It, actually, in... In this uh, campaign, actually, I'll, I'll let them run them down. In this campaign, um, actually, I've noticed that missiles are not that great in Broken Crescent anyway. Uh, so it's interesting that you've decided that. Do you mean um, archers or javelins or both of them? I don't know. Because uh, javelins seem okay, but archers are a bit weak in, um, 
in uh, Broken Crescent, at least in my experience. Um, podcast, you say, uh, I could never get that mod to work. Which, which mod are you talking about? Um, uh, Planet Wars. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, should I ransom? You know what? I'll ransom. I need the money. Um, are you in the Rome Total War Community Discord? I feel I've seen you once. Uh, I am. I'm actually, uh, oh. Okay. Okay. Um, let's try to beat him. What else can I do? Yes, I am in the Rome Total War Community Discord. Um, but, uh, I have another username there, my old username. Rome 1, do you think we'll ever get a Medieval 2 or Rome 1 remastered version? Um, I think we'll get that. I mean, we're seeing a lot of re-releases of um, Rome and, uh, oh, let's see this captain here. Interesting, interesting two-handed swordsman there. Um, so I guess we'll do similar tactics in this battle. But uh, in, for this battle, my, my right flank only has this one infantryman left for support, but uh, hopefully things go okay. Yeah, I actually agree. I think horse archer, but I actually think... Um, I think horse archers are too good in melee. I think um, their melee definitely should have been nerfed a little bit. But the missiles, I'm not sure, because um, if they take out, they soften up the enemy, but I haven't, uh, but I can't really, it's not like Rome Total War where horse archers just obliterate, or at least I haven't seen that. Um... Right, so in uh, regular Broken Crescent, I think all archers have five missile damage, correct? Let's see our archers in action here. Okay, so the enemy... You know what? I have to um, pull my Caucasian Axemen back because I do not want them to get hit by a lot of enemy missiles. I want my Mountaineer Archers to absorb uh, the Missile Fire. Uh, should I put this guy in Sheltrum Formation by himself? How does that even work? I'll do it. Okay, so the enemy is charging forward against the Didibul archers. So let's have our one infantryman charge in. He got one guy. He got two guys. He got three guys. Very good. One unit of levy spearmen. Very nice. Okay, now let's move in the um, the Caucasian Mountaineers to flank. No, 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 you don't have to um, do that. I meant a skirmish. So you know what, archers? You charge in at these guys. And let's have the Mountaineers move in to flank. Are you guys charging? Okay, Didibul Archers, let's see what you can do here. Oh, 
Yeah, so you saw the enemy 86 guys, they launched a volley and they didn't get any of my Dibul archers there. So I, I don't know, I find um, archers to be pretty nerfed here in Broken Crescent. Okay, so um, what did, uh, let me know, what did you do to the um, Caucasian Mountaineer Axemen? Because they've been my favorite unit in this campaign so far. They just tear through everything with their high attack and the armor piercing. We got them. So, uh, yeah, we've actually taken out most of the Zengid forces in, um, in Malatya. So I wonder if we can actually just walk in there and take it back. Can we actually uh, take out any more of them? I don't think so. Yeah, this battle's over. Another nice victory. Um, how's how's my voice? How does my voice sound in this um, stream? Because in the first stream, uh, I did have a couple of um, audio issues. I know the game doesn't sound great. That's actually because it's it's playing through the microphone because I can't get uh, Streamlabs to pick up the game audio of Medieval 2. If anyone has any tips on that, uh, let me know. Send an emissary to the Uyunids. Um, I think I have an emissary here in the area. Or did he die over here? He might have. I can never remember where my emissaries are. Um, is there a screen? Okay, so this captain here, I don't know how this captain didn't get man of the hour because he took out two Zangid armies with nothing. He had nothing, no support. Um, but you know what? We need to get him some support here. So I'll get this um, Levy Spearman back to Sebastia. Get these, uh, these Spearmen and these Cavalrymen back to support this army. And uh, let's... Should we besiege Malatia again? Well, I can't attack the enemy army that's outside... Um, the uh the city unfortunately oh of course my diplomat is in um egypt but you know what i think he can reach the uyunids here in time four turns okay i think he can get there in time okay um Hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, my voice sounds good. That's good. Okay. So my army here, I'm going to send it to attack Aleppo. I think if I, if I attack and sack Aleppo, I don't think I can keep it. I don't think I want to. But if I uh, sack the city... And then um, maybe I'd like to take Eintab. Why not? And then uh, these northern cities, maybe I'll take them, maybe I'll sack them. But uh, I definitely have to make an impression on the Zengids. So I do have some extra troops here. So you know what? Let's get these archers back to Vaka. To retrain and uh, these infantry units come back up to Captain Nerses. 
let's retrain these guys in Sebastia. We can't do that just yet. Okay, Devine is still under siege. The Georgians have an army coming. But you know what? I think I just have to uh, assault and take it. I'm going to lose a lot of troops, though, because the enemy has a lot of knights. But I have no choice. Yeah, so their guy has maximum command. The king of Georgia, Dimitri. But uh, I have no choice. Let's get him. Okay, so it seems like we have uh, 19 watching now. That's good. That's good. So Sunday's not a bad day uh, for some as well. I'm trying to do one, one on the weekend and one in, in the middle of the week. So I'm thinking Saturday or Sunday plus Thursday sound good for streams. So I'm thinking for the next stream, uh, once I complete this campaign, um, I'm thinking it might be good uh, to do a Rome Total War mod. Uh, so let me know, everybody, what Rome Total War mod would you like to see on the stream? That's a horse archer general. Yeah, the Georgians uh, have horse archer generals, which is uh, interesting. But as we saw a couple of episodes ago, uh, the, even the Georgian general could not stand against Caucasian mountaineer axemen. They just tore them to pieces. It was not even funny. So let's, um, let's get this party started. Actually, you know what? I don't want to move in the battering ram uh, because I think there's an inner citadel here. Oh, actually, there isn't. So you know what? Let's uh, uh let's use the bat. Uh, no, you know what? Forget the battering ram. Forget it. I'm gonna use lose troops unnecessarily because the enemy doesn't even have any infantry. So I'll just uh, climb the walls. Let's bring our troops closer. I never... Um, okay, someone says, Invasio Barbarorum Restitutor Orbis. Um, it's still in beta. I'd like for them to get it out of beta before I do that, but... Um, it's a possibility. There is actually also a lesser known mod, Restitutor Orbis, for um, uh, whatchamacallit. Um, what do I want to say? Oh, there's a Restitutor Orbis mod for Rome 2, for the Empire Divided campaign. Uh, I actually wanted to check that one out, but I haven't had a chance yet. Actually, dump the siege tower. By the time you get to where I want you to go, it'll be tomorrow. So let's just climb the walls and take the gate. Must be hard to climb a wall with a giant axe. But when it clips through the ladder like that, it must be easier. Um, have you tried Bronze Age? Yes, I actually reviewed Bronze Age. It was It's one of my biggest videos, or one of my most popular videos. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, check that out. And uh, yeah, I could stream Bronze Age, why not? I never liked Invasio Barbarorum. The stack spam for all the factions is ridiculous. Um, it's definitely a mod that has a lot more stacks running around than um, your average mod. And that is uh, something about it that does make it a little less my style. Our soldiers 
but but it's fun i like it so i'd like to do that mod but once it's out of beta okay the gate is ours so let's move our cavalry and stuff inside let's run in so that we can actually start fighting those uh, monaspa guards get inside everyone actually the archers um i don't need the archers uh the spearmen you know what i want the spearmen to move against the cavalry and then i'll have my uh my cavalry actually move to flank them actually i'll have the king support the infantry with his uh, command stat no, 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 guys, 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 why? Why would you go that way? I don't want you to go that way. Okay, go this way, please. Um, so I want the spearmen to engage at the beginning. And then I want my Axemen to move in for support. And I want the King uh, to support everyone here with his uh, command stat. Okay, so everybody keep moving in, keep moving. Okay, now that the um, uh, Spearmen are going to take the brunt of the enemy attack. Um, I'll have the Axemen move in as well. And then I'll have the King move in closer. And I'll move in these guys uh, to flank. Actually, you know what? I'll move in the Knights uh, to take the... Uh, the town center. Okay, I changed my mind. I want to preserve my generals lives at all costs. I don't want to lose any more generals. Okay, so our spearmen are taking the brunt of the enemy attack here. Yeah, the Georgian the Georgian general Am I going to make a video on stainless steel and or its submods? Um, you know, I was never a huge stainless steel fan. Oh, so actually uh, we're going to take this we're going to take this castle soon, but uh, let's flank him anyway. If we can take down the king, it would be a nice moral victory. So, um, you know, I will, uh, I will make a video on stainless steel. I just, back in the day, I was not a big fan of it. Um, so I don't have as much experience with it. I, d I have played the ship submod. I have been um, testing it recently. And uh, it's very nice. It is a bit unstable, however, especially for me. I... I've tried to do a couple of campaigns. I tried one as uh, Georgia, and I tried one as Pisa. And especially the Pisa campaign was very unstable for me. I don't know if it had to do with the uh, Pisa faction or um, something else. But um, yeah, I don't know.
you know what? Move the king out of there. I don't want anything stupid to happen. Now that I say that, something stupid is going to happen, isn't it? Actually, we're not doing that bad. The enemy are badly flooded. They have lost half their men. Okay. So we took the castle. Very nice. It's uh, it's nice to have a relaxing Total War YouTuber, one who plays mods too. Um, yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, th thank you for that. Yeah, I like. Uh, I mean, I like exciting YouTubers, but um, relaxing is important too, right? Um, and yeah, I thought there was not enough mod coverage. Uh, in any case, so, um, yeah. Okay, Devine is ours. Very nice. So let's, um, let's construct a small church in Devine. Let's retrain our axemen there. And, um, hmm. Should I make another axeman? I think I will, just because I need more troops up here. But uh, yeah, it seems like we are nearing the end of this campaign. We are successful on all fronts. And uh, I just have to take Nachichevan, and my goal for this campaign will be complete, which was uh, retaking the main provinces of the old uh, medieval Armenian kingdom which lasted from 885 to 1045 and these were the main uh, provinces i wanted to take ani van devin and nachchevan so uh yeah that's going very well and we had another demos uh demos says uh, did you beat the turks um that's a very broad question for this mod. Uh, there's a lot of different factions that fall under that category. Um, I did beat them. The Seljuks attacked me at Sebastia and Kilikia, and I beat them back. I beat back all of their attacks, and then they sued for peace. Um, the Romans, the Byzantines, uh, I beat back all their attacks pretty much except they did take Trabizond. I had taken it from them, and then they took it back. Um, and then I was going to retake it, but everyone remembers the shenanigans that happened during that assault. But uh, yeah, now we have a better central army here that can retake Malatia. Um, our troops... Okay, let's retrain. No, we can't. Um, our troops in Armenia are doing very well since we... Uh, hello, Mayum. How are you? Uh, our troops, after defeating the Georgian army here in the mountains, uh, we had great success against Georgia. And uh, now all that's left is Nachichevan. So you know what? I'm going to just get my forces together and um, move against Nachichevan, because once I take it, I'll consider this campaign complete. Uh, yeah, Histo guy remembers the... I, I couldn't take the ladders from the outer wall to the inner wall, and because of that, I couldn't take the inner citadel, which was just silly. So, um... Okay, let's, uh... Train some more axemen. Let's get these archers to cease to be retrained. They don't want to go. Okay. And uh, Sebastia could use... Okay, Garin is okay. I'm constructing brothels, so it's okay. Um... 
You know what? I could besiege Nachichevan right now. But I want to build up some more forces. Just a little more. Okay, so I have a spy here. I'm going to send this spy uh, to take a look at the El Diguzid forces there. Um, and I have another spy here. I'm going to check on the Georgians. Make sure the Georgians don't um, send any new armies down against me. So you know what? The El Diguzids, they have... Um, nine units in Tabriz, their capital, and in Nahichevan they have one unit. So you know what? I'm going to take the king and uh, my axeman, my trusty axeman, and my Nacharar knights, and I'm going to um, take Nahichevan. Okay, so um, yeah, they only have one general in Nachichevan, and uh, once we take that, I'll consider this campaign to be a success, and perhaps I'll showcase another faction. Um, what, fa what other faction would uh, people like to see? Uh, I was thinking of doing Oman. I'd like to showcase Oman, because I think that Oman roster is very nicely done in um, Broken Crescent and it deserves all the praise it can get. Okay, so I've got some more Axemen here. I'll move them to Sebastia. Um, I do need a few more troops here, so you know what? I'll, um, I'll make some more spearmen in Tarsus. Uh, yes, Angel of Death, I was saying um, uh, I'll showcase another faction in Broken Crescent just for this stream. Uh, Byzantines, um, are, isn't there a lot of coverage of the Byzantines already? Oh, Devine has a public order problem. Okay, Axman, uh, you guys go to Devine. Still at 50. Uh, Spearman, Cavalry... Still at 50. Okay, now Ani has a problem. Okay, um, maybe one of the Indian factions. Um, okay. Okay, unfortunately, I can't seem to solve this Devine public order problem. But um, eh, it's okay. I'm training some more Axemen. Hopefully, um, that will help, and the church, of course. Indian faction, okay, maybe the Rajputs. There's also the Mamlakate of Sindh, which is a Muslim Indian faction. It's pretty, it has a pretty similar roster to the Rajputs. But I'm really leaning towards Oman. Just, uh, I'll just uh, showcase a couple of the units and maybe play a battle, because this stream is going to be shorter than the last stream. The last stream lasted almost um, four hours. So that was a tough one. That was a long one. Might want to sack cities to avoid public order issue. Uh, I don't know. It kind of bothers me to sack cities. I don't like doing it. Only when someone betrays me, for example, like the Zengids. I'll sack the Zengid cities. They don't deserve anything. But yeah, all in all, personally, Vladimir Suzdal, oh, okay. I actually haven't seen anyone ever play them. And he's ready to upgrade. Devine is under siege. And Devine is also rioting. Oh, but now it's at 70% public order, so that's good. It's good to see they solve their public order issues um, as they're under siege. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, let's take Nachichevan. Karel says sacking is my primary option. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I understand. I just don't like doing it personally. That's why you'd like to see Vladimir Suzdal. Okay, I've never, I've never played them either. So, yeah. Okay, so um, siege tower maybe over there. I guess it doesn't really matter. because the enemy doesn't have any infantry. But yeah, this is going to be the last city to take. So let's do this. Medieval 2, good old battles. Uh, good to see you, I like your username. Yeah, I, I agree with Demos, you can't burn your problems away. <laughs> Uh, does disbanding units in um, a settlement increase the population in Medieval 2 as well as Rome? I, I thought it didn't work in Medieval 2. Uh, someone let me know. Okay, you guys can run. Yeah, I thought I thought that was just in Rome. Okay, so the enemy. Oh, and this will actually uh, give us a chance to showcase the general's bodyguard of the El Diguzid Atabeg. Very nice shield here. Take a look at that detail on the shield. Very nice indeed. Um, but it seems like they are also a kind of horse archer, middle, um, um, medium cavalry type. of unit but I don't know I like our general's bodyguards I actually if I were to redo the Armenian heavy cavalry here I would choose this white um, white cloth color I would make those the general's bodyguard night color and then i would um make this unit a little bit more of a uh, i would make the cloth a bit lighter because in the artwork i've seen i would i've seen like lighter armor lighter cloth on the horses but uh, in any case that's neither here nor there Uh, Meum, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the nature of total war, unfortunately. So I guess um, what I will do is I'll take the gate and then I'll uh, do what I did last time. I'll flank the enemy cavalry. Unless they charge at me. If they charge at me, I'll charge back at them. Um, yeah, the, the late Roman emperors were not... <laughs> the most intelligent especially Honorius uh, if anyone has watched my let's play of Invasio Barbarorum Rina Rome you'll see uh, how Honorius actually has a very epic death well actually it, it doesn't look that epic but um, he, it, it was kind of heroic Okay, guys, let's run. Let's do this. And let's
let's move our cavalry around the sides uh, to flank. I think there's a, yeah, there's a way on the right here. So I'll have the king support. Um, uh, can you give me some tips on how to install the mod? Uh, what you have to do for Broken Crescent is just um, install it into the mods folder of your Medieval 2 installation and then um, run the .bat file uh, that's in the Broken Crescent folder. Um, and it should work. Uh, the Medieval 2 mods are definitely easier to install and launch than uh, Rome Total War mods. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, are you playing on Steam or on the disc? With the disc. Okay, so our Caucasian Mountaineers are engaged with the Ohus nobles. So I'll have my uh, Nacharar Knights charge in from the flank. Oh yeah, you also have to make a kingdoms.exe file. So you just have to uh, copy um, copy the medieval2.exe and uh, rename the copy kingdoms.exe and keep it in the same uh, location. Uh, so that's another thing you have to do. Good call, Karel, on that. I'm playing this on Steam, by the way. Okay, so the enemy uh, Ohus nobles, uh, they, they seem pretty strong, but um, yeah, my mountaineers are actually doing pretty well against them considering they don't have cavalry bonus. Okay, so let's have our knights move in as well. The enemy are badly flooded. They have lost half their men. The yeah, I don't know about uh, custom battle maps for... Yeah, it was Honorius's uh, chicken. When uh, they sacked Rome, uh, Honorius thought that his chicken had died, and he was very sad. But when he found out it was the city, um, he was okay with it. That's a legend, though. We're not sure if that really happened. So it seems like this battle is uh, almost over. Okay, so we won. We have taken Nachichevan. And that's uh, pretty much the last province I wanted to take in this campaign. So we did indeed succeed. After that difficult episode we had in the last stream, uh, we've... we've uh, the best thing Honorius did for Rome was dying. Uh, <laughs> I think a lot of historians would agree with that. Um, oh, did I sack the city? Yeah, I did. Um, okay, so yeah, that was the issue about the EXE. So actually, um, uh, Gigantus, the user Gigantus on Total War Center has provided a new installer for um, stainless steel version 6.0, uh, 6.4. And in that new installer, um, he has included a little a file creator that uh, actually copies the Medieval 2 EXE for you and renames it to Kingdoms. So you don't have to do that yourself. And it's actually a very helpful tool. So if you, if you install um, uh, the Gigantus installer for stainless steel version 6.4, then actually the .exe will be copied and prepared for you, so that'll work for all of your um, 
uh, future mods that you install for uh, Medieval 2. Uh, hello, Heldermayor. Good to see you on one of these streams. Currently playtesting a board game about the successor states 220 BC to 160 BC. Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, so when you say, um, you mean the Diadochi successor states? Okay, so Nachichevan is ours. And uh, we have to... Uh, Thieves Guild. I don't want Thieves. Um, what can I recruit here? Oh, so actually I can recruit some Georgian spearmen. The Shubosani Molashkre. Hmm. Um, and I can also recruit some Manaba spearmen, my better um, garrison spearmen that are recruited from cities. These guys are actually pretty good. Um, but yeah, I accomplished my goals. So I consider this campaign to be a victory. But you know what? One last thing I should do is relieve the siege of Devin. Um, Demos is asking for links. Uh, what, what links, Demos? Okay, so let's, uh, you know what, let's lift the siege of Devin and then this campaign will be a victory. Okay, so let's um, get our Axemen together. And let's do this. It is called Hubris. Oh yeah, that's a good, that is a good name for a board game about the successor states. Oh, link for the board game, okay. Um, has anyone had a bug in Restitutor Orbis where your faction changes after a few turns and then the game crashes? Um, no, I haven't had that problem. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, that's exactly why I want to uh, wait I did a review of Restitutor Orbis, but it's it was a review of the beta. I made that clear. Um, and I, I want to wait until it's a full release before playing it. So let's uh, start this battle. Let's get this party started. Let's relieve the Siege of Devin, and then this campaign will be over. So I'll... Um, yeah. Mayum, what's the victory conditions? Uh, you mean the victory conditions for um, Kilikia? Uh, I believe I have to... I believe... Oh, we'll check the victory conditions um, uh, once, once I finish this battle with the Georgians. But I believe I have to um, take like 40 provinces and then um, what else do I have to do? Uh, I have to take Devin and Ani and a couple of other cities and hold them for like 80 turns or something. So let's bring everyone in close. Our guys are coming in. Okay, so uh, Restitutor Orbis issue. My game froze when the enemy general died. Um, interesting, I, I haven't seen that issue either. It does this bug with every other faction except Aurelian. Oh. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, I do notice that in Invasio Barbarorum, 
Um, sometimes the other factions are not quite as polished as the Romans or the Eastern Romans or the, Sassan the Sassanids are also very well done. Um, I can't leave links. Look on Board Game Geek for hubris. So everybody, look on Board Game Geek for hubris. Okay, so let's set up a battle line. This battle is going to be pretty straightforward. So let's get our guys to move in. Actually, you know, um, so for the next stream, we were talking a little bit about this before. I'm thinking of doing a Rome Total War mod because um, uh, this time uh, for three streams, I've been playing Medieval 2. So I think it would be nice to do a Rome Total War mod and, um, you know, balance it out. Actually, let's just walk. Uh, but in any case, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm thinking... I did a review recently of um, Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition 2.0. And that video was actually uh, my most successful video in a long time. So I wonder, would anyone like to see a stream of that mod because it is an older mod but it, it is a classic so I'm down to stream that mod it's not the most historically accurate but it it's pretty classic I really like what it brought to the table for Rome Total War it was one of the first made it was the first mod I ever played so yeah let me know if you'd like to see that one Let's charge in at these guys. I think we can finish this quickly. Okay, now bodyguards. Charge at the Lancers. Aspet Cavalry, um, throw your javelins. Okay, and there's my king. So actually, I'll move my king to charge their Monaspa Lancers from the flank. Okay, very good. Very good charge there. My favorite version was uh, Rome Total Realism 5.0 demo, the one where you could only play as the Romans. Interesting. I, d I don't know about that one. It's probably not playable anymore. I don't think uh, Rome Total Re Realism 5.0 is uh, playable with um, the current versions. But it does indeed seem like... Um, let's uh, see the cinematic of this battle ending. Lucium Total War, huh? Um, I haven't had a chance to play it yet. It's very interesting. Uh, Total War about South America. I know. Th I don't think it has been done in any other mod, so I will definitely do a video on it. Um, but it's for Medieval 2, so maybe next time I do Medieval 2. I want to kind of mix it up um, every time I play a different mod. I'd like to do one for Rome, one for Attila, then Medieval 2, and then kind of mix it up. Okay, we got the enemy general. Only a military genius can bring us victory, but we're winning. Oh, 
Okay, Caucasian Mountaineer Archers move in. Okay, we were successful there. So, um, you guys? Okay, Axemen move in. Okay, we're so far being very successful. We're so far very successful against their um, troops here. Uh, good evening, Marcus. Hello. We're nearing the end of this campaign. Yeah, so I definitely do want to do some coverage of uh, Lucium Total War. I just haven't had a chance to uh, test that mod yet. You have a bug with RTRPE. I can't load the campaign. That's interesting. Um, I'll... Um, you prefer RTR8. I actually haven't had a chance to play RTR8 yet. I've played a little bit of 7. But uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I played RTRPE, Platinum Edition. And then... Um, then when I found Europa Barbarorum, I I didn't really play Rome Total Realism after that uh, because EB was kind of the mod for me. So yeah, it, it had actually been maybe 12 years, 13 years since I had played Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition when I played it again for the review. Uh, so yeah, that's why I thought Maybe streaming that would be cool. But if if I did stream Rome Total Realism uh, Platinum Edition, what factions would you like to see me stream? I just remembered I was, or Demo says, I just remembered I was once taking a math test in school and I got really into a particular problem. The moment I solved it, I lost control and shouted, we are blessed, the enemy general is dead. <laughs> yeah I see what you mean let's chase him down let's have our knights chase down these guys yeah we really beat the Georgians here we lost 19% of our troops and they lost uh, they're going to lose everyone right now But that's interesting, a version of Rome Total Realism with only um, one faction playable. They definitely focused way more on Rome than um, uh, the other factions. That's one of my issues with RTR is, uh, I don't know, it seems like they've worked a lot harder on Rome than on the other factions. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm... I'm down to stream it. I'd like to. Mayum says, um, I'm wondering why did Armenia convert its religion to Christianity? When did it begin? And what were their beliefs before Christianity? Oh, there have been whole PhD theses written about that. Um, so the traditional date for the conversion of Armenia to Christianity was 301 AD. Um, and it was done during the reign of uh, Tiridates III, the Arsakid king of Armenia, the Arsakid dynasty. It seems like Georgia doesn't have any money, unfortunately. Um, but, um, yeah, so the king, Tiridates III, uh, he converted... Uh, himself and the kingdom to Christianity. He made it the state religion. Um, so yeah, Devin is ours. And we've lifted the siege. And Nachichevan is really unhappy. So we've got to get some uh, troops there. Maybe this uh, archer unit. Okay. Now Armenia is ours and everyone is fairly happy. 
Um, okay, let me finish the story. So um, there is a whole... Uh, it's recorded in a few uh, fourth century texts, fifth century texts, uh, that um, the king uh, converted the kingdom to Christianity in 301 AD. And uh, so that was a little bit before the Romans did, a little bit before Constantine. And um, uh, th there is a whole... There's a whole story about that involving St. Gregory the Illuminator. If you would like to know the story of the conversion, I suggest you um, look into the biography of St. Gregory the Illuminator. Um, and then, uh, yeah, actually the Arsacid kingdom of Armenia was an interesting kingdom, and it's, unfortunately, it doesn't get that much representation in Rome, in, um, Total War mods. Uh, it is in Attila, um, but it's not playable, which is unfortunate. Um, it was not really a puppet state, especially in that time, in the third and fourth, fourth centuries. Especially, it was. Um, it fought a lot of wars with Persia. There were a lot of wars after the Sassanids defeated the Parthians, which were the like the brother kingdom of Armenia because they were also Arsacids. So they were related. The dynasties were related. Um, the Arsacids were very upset when the Parthians were overthrown by the Persians. So there was a big war between Armenia and uh, Persia for a long time. And that ended in the 370s and the 380s uh, when uh, peace was made and Armenia, the Armenian kingdom was weakened significantly in that time and eventually Armenia was incorporated into the Persian Empire uh, as a governorship of the empire and um, uh, yeah any anything else you would like to know oh beliefs before Christianity it was basically um, so some people say it was Zoroastrianism and some scholars call it uh, Armenian paganism. It was kind of a combination because you see unique local elements. Um, in addition to um, the Zoroastrian elements. So it was kind of a syncretic local religion. Some scholars call it Armenian paganism. But of course, um, there was... Uh, there are scholars that say it was just a type of Zoroastrianism. Um, I don't really... I, I would lean more towards the paganism aspect because th there are a lot of local elements in there. But uh, in any case, um, yeah. Like, for example, the king of the gods was um, Aramazd, who is just Ahura Mazda, right? Just another name for Ahura Mazda. Um, so there are definitely the Zoroastrian elements. You can't deny that. Um, there's a fleshed out Armenia mod for Attila that might interest you. Um, there is? I didn't know. Uh, post the link. Um, I know that uh, Fall of the Eagles fleshes out Armenia with new units and stuff, but um, it's not exactly it's not exactly uh, it's not playable in Fall of the Eagles. But I know they added a lot of units and made it more fleshed out. So yeah, this campaign. Uh, does anyone really want me to continue this campaign? I've completed my goals here. For this campaign, I've done essentially a reconquista. I moved through this corridor here of rebel settlements. I defeated the Seljuk invasion. I defeated the Zengid invasion here, basically. Um, I defeated the Roman invasions in the north and in the south. I took northern Armenia from the Georgians. And I took... Van and Nachichevan from 
the, uh, I took Van from the rebels and Nachiche Van from the Eldiguzids. Oh, you're you're welcome, Mayum. I I love when I get questions like that. So please, um, ask away. But uh, let let me know if that answer was uh, satisfactory. Again, if you want more details, look up the biography of uh, Saint Gregory the Illuminator. So in any case, I've just taken Nachichevan and it has a 70% public order. And I'll make a church there just to show that I'm building something to improve its public order. And yeah, I think this campaign is over. If anyone really wants me to continue this campaign, I will do it. But um, I want to save. So actually, I want to uh, showcase another faction here. Uh, this stream is going to be a, a lot shorter than the last stream. The last stream was uh, four, about four hours. Um, and that, that's a bit too long for me. I was, I was a bit beat after that. Um, but I want to actually show um, um, Vladimir Suzdal. I got a lot of requests. Uh, Jeezy is asking, how often do you stream? Um, I try to stream twice a week now. So um, once once on a weekday, so Thursday. I'm, I'm aiming towards doing it on Thursdays. And um, once on the weekend, so either Saturday or Sunday. Oh, Toggle Fog of War. Good, good call. So let's uh, load the Kilikia game and I'll toggle the Fog of War. Uh, before we close the book, uh, uh, before we um, turn the page on that campaign. So I stream twice a week, once during the week, once on the weekend. Oh, thank you, Ruariri Trick. Ruariri Trick. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that okay. Uh, thank you for the link. I'll check that out. Um, Milo the Orange. Gudea, did you install uh, Chivalry Total War on regular Rome Total War or Barbarian Invasion? Um, actually, I'm playing it on Alexander, so neither. Okay, so here is the map. So this is a very interesting and well-balanced campaign we got going here. So, um, yeah, the Byzantines have a little snaky arm up north here because uh, what I did is I basically crushed their forces near Trabizond, but I couldn't take the castle. And uh, everyone knows the story with the ladders. Um, Rory trick. Rory trick. Yes, the Celtic languages, I don't have a background in the Celtic languages, so please forgive me. Um, so the Byzantines are doing okay, all things considered, but yeah, actually their military power has been seriously curtailed because I basically destroyed all of their armies. The Seljuks are stronger now because uh, they've been at peace with me for quite a while. Uh, hello Heath, how are you? Uh, you just missed, uh, I finished reconquering the Armenian provinces. So I'm just showing, toggling the fog of war and showing um, what uh, the rest of the world looks like, or the rest of the Middle East and Central Asia. So in India, uh, the Mamlakate of Sindh seems to be doing very well. And the Rajputs are not doing bad either. And the other Rajputs are doing okay too. Uh, the Ghaznavids are falling which is um, correct. They're falling to the Ghorids, which is a historically accurate. Um, the Karachitai seem to be doing okay. The Khwarezmians are doing quite well. Uh, the Seljuks of Kerman seem to have a unusual empire here. The Eldiguzids, I just took Nachichevan from them and yeah, their military is weak. 
I don't know what went wrong with them. Oh, they're besieging Baku. Maybe that's why they're um, distracted. Uh, Georgia. Yeah, I just destroyed the Georgians here. Uh, I destroyed the Georgian forces near Ani and Devin, so their military is weak. The Zangids are pretty strong, but after I beat back... Oh, they have a big army here. But um, yeah, the Zangids are strong. This would have been an interesting war had I continued this campaign. Uh, the Abbasids are pretty weak. Um, Oman... Oman is a pretty, they've got a pretty strong army right there. Um, the Ayyubids are doing very badly. The Kingdom of Jerusalem is tearing them apart, which is uh, interesting to see. Um, yeah, Kingdom of Jerusalem doing very well. Doing very well there. They've taken Damascus. They've taken Taima. Wow. And Nabonidus would be proud. Uh, Angel of Death, or uh, Heath, says, uh, Milo, every mod will have specific installation instructions. Um, yeah, that's true. But, um, yeah, chivalry can run on Rome Total War, on Barbarian Invasion. And on Alexander. There's a patch that lets it run on Alexander. Uh, so that's why I run Chivalry on Alexander. It's a little more stable than a Barbarian Invasion I found. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's the map there. Anything in particular anyone wants to see? Oh, how is the Mongol Invasion in this mod? Uh, really, really tough. Really tough. Uh, Jeezy says, long live Armenia. I'm sure they'll have a healthy history without anything ever going wrong. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. We have uh, restored the old medieval Armenian kingdom. So let's go back to the uh, title screen. And uh, we have about um, 30 minutes left. We have about 30 minutes left for this stream. So somebody wanted to see Vladimir Suzdal because nobody ever plays Vladimir Suzdal. Um, where are they? Um, this guy? No. This guy? No. There he is. Um, okay. Well, you actually have to worry about the Mongols if you play as a faraway faction. Um, I've heard that the Mongol invasion is so tough in Broken Crescent that um, you do. Christ bless the Rus. All right. So here we have uh, Vladimir, and that's our only province. So let's take a look at our units here. Starshi Oporchenye. Interesting. We've got Speshenaya Drujina. I think this is a dismounted heavy horseman. Drujina in Slavic means um, uh, heavy cavalry. So this is the dismounted heavy cavalry. We've got Mladci Opolchenye, uh, which are like the light axemen there. We've got the spear units, which are not bad. They're about the same as the they're a little bit better than the Armenian Light Spearmen, seems like. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got. So let's actually do a battle as Vladimir Suzdal. I've heard that the Vladimir Suzdal units are buggy and cause crashes. Oh, interesting. I actually, uh, I never tested them, so I don't know. 
So we've got a merchant here. I'll send him down to Mesopotamia because I always send my merchants to Mesopotamia. Because I like Mesopotamia. I'm King Gudea. So we've got a princess here. Four hearts. She's a brave woman. That's good. So let's send her down here, maybe to the Byzantines or something. We've got a diplomat. Let's send him down. So let's get these troops together. And let's attack Riazan. And uh, let's see what we can construct in Vladimir. Let's construct roads. Russia definitely needs roads. Or Vladimir Suzdal needs roads. Uh, so let's end the turn. Let's uh, just play a couple turns as Vladimir Suzdal. And then I want to show Oman. Because Oman has a very, uh, very nice roster. I quite like Oman's roster here. Um, a suitable prince, Andrejan Ledovich, betrothed to Sviatoslava Vladimirsky. I think it should be Vladimirskaya, right, for a woman? Um, but in any case, he's a skilled bureaucrat, and that's what we need. Tver. Let's take Tver. Okay. And this... Uh, Army under Knyaz Vsevolod uh, will go against Riazan. Great, we got marriage. And we're constructing roads. Oh, and Vladimir's financial situation is not good. So this seems like one of a... Yeah, I think Medieval 2 can't do the whole feminine Slavic last names there. But uh, in any case... Let's at least try to see some of the units, and then if the game crashes, well, we know what to blame. The buggy Vladimir Suzdal unit. Mongols typically, uh, Bat Eater says, Mongols typically demanded submission to the Khan, tribute and military aid. And when you said no, well, we all know what happens afterwards. Uh, yeah, basically. Bride presented, okay. So actually, um, the Armenian king, Hetum, uh, launched an expedition to Karakoram and made an alliance with the Mongols, and that was a major development. And of course, that had an influence also on the Crusaders, who made an alliance with the Mongols against the um, Mamluks, the Mamluk Egyptians and uh, yeah they had a very cooperative relationship actually and uh, when Hetum the king of uh, Armenian Kilikia went through Armenia as he was journeying to Karakoram um, a lot of the Armenian princes heard about what he was doing so when the Mongols came to Armenia proper um, they actually uh, the princes said, oh, we're, we're with Hetum, we're Armenian too. So then the um, Mongols uh, were nice to them, or nicer than usual. So uh, let's take Tver. But yeah, in, in conclusion, in a Broken Crescent, you do have to worry about the Mongols in the late game because they, they come very strong and they keep getting stronger. Try the randomizer mod. Um, you know, I've never tried a randomizer. Oh, so let's take a look at these uh, Vladimir Suzdal units. Knyaz Druzhina. So yeah, this is actually a very nice looking unit here, a very nice looking general. Kind of a half cataphract type of unit here, or a three quarters cataphract. Very nice there. Let's take a look at our basic units. 
Yeah, pretty much what you'd expect from Broken Crescent. Uh, everything looks very nice. And let's take a look at these nicer Axemen. Yeah, again, very nice. Speshennaya Drujina, the, the dismounted heavy cavalry. Uh, so yeah, very nice looking units. Nice shields especially. Nicer for Mongols is still far from nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's get our troops together. Yeah, these, uh, these half cataphracts look very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, so let's um let's get this party started. Oh, this part is uh, unassailable. So let's take the town. Okay, so this stream is going to end in about 20 minutes. So just with this battle, I'm going to showcase the Vladimir Suzdal units and the Russian rebel units. And then um, I will have to end the stream in about uh, 20 to 25 minutes here. And then I'll, sh I'll probably show Oman if I have a few minutes left. But uh, indeed, the Mongols actually did help um, uh, the Kilikian kingdom quite a bit. Uh, actually, the Kilikian kingdom outlasted the Mongols, the Ilkhanate, so uh, they couldn't help them in the end there, but um, they helped them quite a bit at repelling the Mamluks, at securing their borders, and... Um, uh, yeah, so it was actually a pretty good arrangement for them there. Uh, Mayum, are you done with the Kilikia campaign? Um, yeah, I, I basically um, did my goals, uh, which were to um, uh, take Devin, Nachichevan, and um, Ani, and Van. I wanted to basically take the old uh, historical... Uh, the old uh, medieval Armenian kingdom provinces uh, of the kingdom that lasted until 1045 uh, AD, the Bagratid kingdom. So I took those provinces, I uh, defeated the Georgian attackers, and I declared victory in the Kilikia campaign. Um, Marcus says, what will be your next campaign? Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, battle here. But yeah, it seems like the Russian units more lightly armored than the standard Middle East units. Um, they have more, you know, different kinds of hats and style. They look very nice. I really like this green color here. Um, my siege tower doesn't want to come. Oh, I see what happened. Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, what will be your next... Marcus says, what will be the next campaign? Um, I was talking about it, I, how I wanted to do a um, Rome Total War stream after doing three straight streams of uh, Medieval 2. So I want to always mix it up. So I'll do a Medieval 2, uh, a Tilla, or Rome, whatever. So um, I'm thinking I will do a stream of... Because the Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition 2.0 mod video did so well, um, I want to I want to stream that because it seems like there are a lot of people still interested in uh, that version of Rome Total Realism, um, which is cool because that's a very classic mod. It's the first mod I ever played. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, you know what I think. I'll declare it here. I will stream Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition 2.0 and I'll have a vote 
I'll have a poll as to what faction I should play. So uh, I'll let uh, the fans, I'll let the uh, subscribers uh, vote on um, what faction I should play for Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition. Maybe Carthage? Sure. Okay, it seems like the ram is going to burn up here, unfortunately. But it seems like we're doing pretty well in, in this attack. What do you think about Roma uh, Serectum? Um, I like Roma Serectum a lot. Actually, uh, I was a team member of Roma Serectum. Actually, I'll just declare that. Back in the day, I was a tester, advisor, um, sort of person on the team. Angel of Death says, is the Roma Serectum mod foldered? No, it's not. That's why it's so hard to get it playable these days. So we're doing very well here. We've taken the gateway, so let's move our guys inside. Okay, so it seems like the enemy is uh, running around in the... Oh, they also have half cataphracts. I didn't know that um, these uh, Rus principalities had uh, so many half cataphract uh, horsemen. Th they look nice. Oh, GZF, thank you so much for joining and becoming a channel member. Uh, so uh, channel members are called uh, Eastern Infantry and if uh, and the next tier up are, they're called Cataphracts so if you would like to join and support the channel I would greatly appreciate that um, Eastern Infantry and Cataphracts uh, get access to a um, once a month stream members only stream um, that uh, I'm looking to do at the end of, near the end of every month. Uh, I'll I'll make a post for members uh, to figure out what time is best to do those members only streams so that nobody feels left out. Um, and of course I'll you know upload it after the fact. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much, Jeezy for joining and becoming a member. If anyone else would like to become a member, that would be greatly appreciated. And um, yeah, you would get access to that uh, monthly stream. So um, yeah, it'll be fun. I'll make sure it is. Medieval 2 Good Old Battles says, I like the pink pajama people. Does that mean... Oh, I was going to say, does that mean you want me to stream as Parthia for uh, Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition? Which I'm down to do, of course. Uh, who would like to see Parthia? Who would like to see um, Pontus? Who would like to see Carthage? Someone says Carthage, so um, I will consider Carthage. But I'll put up a poll. And of course that poll will be uh, influenced by what people have to say here. So Carthage will definitely be included in that list of possible factions. So the Rus principalities are coming at us with Mladshaya Drujina. Mladshaya, I'm not sure what it means. I'm not a Slavic language expert.
So let's uh, take down the, this heavy cavalry here. Does Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition have a Bosporan Kingdom? Uh, no. I don't believe they do. If I'm wrong, uh, someone correct me, but um, I don't think so. Come on, guys, enter the fray, enter the fray. Oh, these guys are um, the dismounted horse archers. Interesting. No, actually, they fire their arrows and then they charge, I think. Mladchaya means young. So these are young cavalry. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, Heath. Come join the highest morale Eastern infantry in the land. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> um, Medieval 2 Good Old Battle says, I will vote for Parthia. Okay, okay, so it seems like... Um, oh, someone says, I'll vote for Pontus. Okay, so it seems like there, there are... I'm hearing Carthage, I'm hearing Pontus... I'm hearing Parthia. So, um, yeah, let's see, let's see. Unfortunately, it seems like there's only one street here that leads up to the main... Oh, actually, there's another street. Okay, so I'll take my uh, prince here. I'll have him move back and uh, flank the enemy. I'm, Heath says I'm good for either Pontus or Parthia. Um, okay. Bad Eater votes Parthia as well. Okay, so it seems like there are more votes for Parthia than Pontus or Carthage. Uh, so I'll take that into consideration. You know, if, if everyone would like to see Parthia, I'll just say it's going to be Parthia. Because I haven't played Parthia in a long time. And I actually did not play Parthia. Um, Mayum says Parthia could be better. I guess. Uh, who did you want, Mayum? I didn't see. I didn't see what you said. Or I didn't see which faction you wanted. So anyway, you can basically see what the Russian units look like here. Very nice. Or Slavic units. Very nice. Rus, I should say. Premier Cherdenko says, Eastern Infantry only. Are you saying I should only recruit Eastern Infantry? I don't think there is an Eastern Infantry unit in um, Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition. There are um, unique units. For example, um, there are Kurt, Kurtian, Kurt units in the South Caucasus. And that's kind of like the Light Spear unit. Roche also says Parthia. Histo guy wants to see the pajamas. Yeah, the the banners for the Orthodox factions are very nice here. Uh, I like this um, Russian icon here. Very nice. Eastern Orthodox. Vicky says no pajama boys. Yeah, unfortunately, Rome Total Realism removes the uh, pajamas. <laughs> So again, another look at the Slavic, the Rus bodyguard unit here. Very nice looking. Indeed, the Broken Crescent units are so nice. So let's have uh, one of our infantry move against these guys. Eh, just run. We're not going to... Um, Mayum says Kurt. I'm the only one who's able to type that kick. 
<laughs> oh, what is keck? I actually don't know. Is it like a cackle? Yes, the umlaut. The umlaut over the u, so it's like e, the German uh, umlaut. Okay, so um, their infantry are routing, so it does seem like the um, the Rus infantry here. Oh, their cavalry are coming in to fight me. Okay. So infantry, come in uh, to support, please. Um, and I'll have these guys go take the gate. Why not? Keck is like a 4chan LOL, basically. Oh, thank you, Heath. Um, yeah, I've never been on 4chan, so I don't know. Uh, hello, Thunder Kettle. How are you? So our general is uh, doing pretty well. He's holding his own against the enemy general here. Very, I really like the look of this Rus general. A very nice looking unit. And you know what? The Broken Crescent units look as good as any of the modern Total War units. It looks very nice. But yeah, it does seem like the uh, Rus units have less morale than um, uh, than the units I was facing in the Middle East. But I, I actually really like that they included uh, Rus faction here in Broken Crescent. It adds to the variety, of course. Uh, good to see you too, Thunder Kettle. I'm glad you're doing well. So this guy is uh, trying to fire an arrow while he's getting hacked by Axemen. Okay, so the enemy... Yeah, the... Their defense is pretty high. They are not going down. For the ge these uh, generals here. The general's bodyguard. Do you think CA will remaster Rome 1 and Med 2? Oh, yeah, I remember that question from before. Sorry, I didn't... I got distracted and didn't answer it. Uh, don't be afraid to... Um... um repeat something if I don't remember. Uh, I think they will. We're seeing them re-release Rome on mobile, or they released it on Android and iOS. I think they released it on iOS as well. And they did Barbarian Invasion, and they did Alexander. Um, and who knows, maybe they'll do Medieval 2 as well on mobile. So I think, actually, it, it will just make sense for them to, um, you know, uh, remaster them for modern systems as well, because it'll be a natural progression of uh, re-releasing them and remastering them for, uh, not remastering them, but fixing them up, making them look nice for mobile. I think they will. It would be nice if they did. It would be very nice if they did, if they remastered Rome and Medieval 2 in the same package and released it at a good price, with the expansions included, of course. So this battle is going to be over soon. But in, in any case, that was the, this was uh, Vladimir Suzdal. 
Very nice looking units. I really like the um, the general's bodyguard here. But um, yeah, now uh, I'll showcase Oman quickly. I'll showcase Oman quickly, and then I think that'll be it for this stream. Okay, so let's go to Grand Campaign and um, the Imamate of Oman. Okay, so um, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, if, uh, if anyone has any other requests, uh, please let me know. I'll try to make it happen. So yeah, here is the Imamate of Oman. I like it because it starts out a bit isolated, but you can invade in, into Iran and um, you can move up the coast or you could take all of Arabia. And the units look very nice. So you have the Omani nobles. Um, you have uh, the Imam's guard. So the faction leader is an Imam, which is interesting. And the faction heir is the great Mufti. So I, I don't know. I find it entertaining. I like this faction. So let's get our troops together here. I'll show off at least one battle. So let's get these troops together. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll join them all together. Actually, we can assault right now. So let's assault. So after this battle, I think I will end the stream. Uh, remasters of Shogun and Med 1 could be neat too. Yeah, that would be great. And they would actually work great on mobile, I think. Um, definitely. Medieval, medieval 1 is probably the Total War I'm most nostalgic for. Um, it was the first Total War I ever played. So let's take a look at the Oman units here. So I really like this shield, I don't know why. And he's got the curved sword, very nice. And then there's Omani nobles that I have. The Omani nobles have very nice, like a plaid sort of outfit. I don't know, I just like the design of the Oman unit. And I like, of course, I like the details in the shields. Um, yes, they do. They do. Oman has a unique, has, I believe, Ismaili Islam, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. So let's uh, pound the wall with the catapults. I actually, um, I bought the, my, the first time I played Total War, I used to play Civ 4. I played a lot of Civ 4. Am I seeing pajamas? I'm kidding. Uh, n no, I don't think these are pajamas. I also like this interesting shield on the back of these troops. It looks like butterfly wings, kind of. Uh, so let's charge with our swordsmen. The Omani swordsmen also look nice. Okay, so let's move in.
Okay, our catapults are taking out a lot of troops, seems like. Okay. So let's take a look at the units in action. So let's get our general's bodyguard into the action as well. Because why not? And actually the Omani nobles uh, should also move in because they're charging us with their Arabian Noble Lancers. I use, uh, Thunder Kettle says, I used to imagine the Naginata infantry uh, in Shogun Total War as elves in the Battle of Dagorlad, with tons of peasants acting as orcs and charging them. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so we are defeating their noble lancers, no doubt. Yeah, our catapults are doing very well. So yeah, I'm glad that Oman gets some representation here. I think it's definitely the only Total War mod where you can play as uh, Oman. So that's another reason why I like Broken Crescent. Uh, medieval Two Good Old Battles, who are you agreeing with? Okay, let's get our troops to uh, get away from the door for a second. Let's get away from the door. Get away from the door, guys. Away from the door. But yeah, as you can see, Oman, very nice looking faction. Interesting start position, very isolated. And also there's Yemen as well. Oh, that was interesting. So catapult, stop firing, stop firing, please. Okay, now let's move in, take him out. These are the Omani nobles coming in. So yeah, after this battle, I will uh, end the stream. But yeah, it was another fun stream. Did everyone enjoy it? Uh, we finished the Kilikia campaign. We showcased Vladimir Suzdal. And uh, we showcased Oman as well. Factions that I think um, uh, I think that was a pretty good stream. So any any questions? If does anyone have any questions or suggestions? So next time I'm thinking it seems like it's going to be Rome Total Realism, Platinum Edition, Kingdom of Parthia. GZF says, definitely enjoyed it, probably going to download this mod. 0 to 10, how would you rate this mod? Um, hmm. You know, I would give it, personally, I think it's one of the best mods for Medieval 2. No doubt about it. I would give it, I would give it a 9 because it's not perfect. Um, I feel like 
um, archers need a bit need to be rebalanced a bit, um, including horse archers. Uh, I think that um, archers at range are a little bit too nerfed, and then their melee is a little too good. Um, what else? Um, it's an excellent mod. It's an excellent mod. The f uh, unique factions, unique setting, unique start date, 1174 AD. Um, the units look amazing, second to none. Probably the some of the best looking units made for Medieval 2 of all time. I th the best looking units, I'd say. Um, just look at this guy in the plaid. Omani plaid pajamas. Um, um, I think it's an excellent mod. I'd say 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. But, but the map, the map definitely needs to be rebalanced. The combat, I find it to be okay. Like, if it wasn't the... the the two-handed axemen, my Caucasian mountaineer axemen, they were a bit too strong. I took advantage of that in the campaign, but they, they're too strong. Um, it's a great mod. It's a great mod. Final verdict, 9 out of 10 for Broken Crescent. The map needs rebalancing. Um, fewer provinces in Kilikia. I would change some province names. I would change some of the settlements included um, but all in all 9 out of 10 but yeah so next the next stream will be Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition let's do it Kingdom of Parthia let's uh, free Iran from the clutches of the evil Seleucid Empire the Grey Death So you don't think the um, archer, the archers in melee should be nerfed a bit? I think the horse archers and archers in melee are a bit too strong. Like even if the missiles are okay. Oh, I like these guys' barrel shields. It looks like they took this off a wine barrel or something. Um, yeah, I've done, I've made a submod, I made a submod for, uh, the Invasio Barbarorum Somnium Apostate Giuliani mod. Back in the day, it was a long time ago, maybe 11, 12 years ago when I made that mod, but I've never made a mod for Medieval 2 or a submod. So, um, but I'm down to do it. I'm down to rebalance the Broken Crescent map because I really think it needs some uh, edits. And, you know, if they uh, decide to include them eventually, that would be great, because I don't want to, like, rebalance anything or anything, but I do want to fix the map issues. No, I like the Seleucids personally, but if I'm playing as Parthia, then they're evil. Very good. That was a very good siege assault. So, um, R Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition, um, it's definitely not, it's not an extreme mod like a lot of other mods, but it was really one of the first total overhauls that was complete and done uh, when Europa Barbarorum was still in development, in active development. So it's it's definitely a classic that I want to um, take a closer look at because you know what? I might um, 
I might think about doing a submod of Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition to fix th those map issues because everyone knows Rome Total Realism Platinum Edition has a lot of strange decisions on the campaign map in terms of the province balance. There, it it's just too dense in certain areas. Syria is too dense. Uh, for example, it includes um, Antioch and Pieria. Uh, what time am I streaming on Thursday? Um, I'm going to do it at the same time. 9, 9 p.m. GMT plus 4. So uh, I'm going to try and do all the streams at about the same time because it seems to be good for a lot of people. So uh, yeah, that was Broken Crescent. We completed our Kilikia campaign, our personal goals. We showcased Vladimir Suzdal. And we showcased Oman. Oh, Vlad, Vlad Kostin. Hello, hello, Vlad. How are you? Uh, Vlad says, thanks for your videos. I can learn English tongue watching them. That's great. With love from Russia. Well, thank you. Thank you, Vlad. I'm glad you enjoy the videos. I'm glad, um, um, I'm glad you can uh, learn English from it. That's very good. <laughs> thank you. So thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, I guess this is goodbye for today. Uh, thank you for watching the stream. It was a very well-populated stream for a Sunday stream. Uh, thanks everyone uh, who joined. Thanks everyone. Uh, thank you, Heath, for the super chat. Um, I'll see you guys next time.